Okay, I'm very uh, tired here, but uh, I'm going to try to do uh, 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 one more thing here. And I'm going to try to, this time, uh, put a refinancing assumption where instead of having a simple refinancing assumption like this, we're going to have refinancing one, two, hmm, let's, uh, uh, no, let's see, I'm, I'm already kind of screwing up control here. Let's move this crap over here. So let's have one refinancing in year five, another refinancing in year seven, another year financing in year nine, another one in 11, and another one in 13, and 15. Okay, so how about even one in 20? Okay, and uh, let's say it goes down to seven fifty. Let's let let's for now keep it at eight hundred. Now that's very unrealistic. When I get out here, let's say this goes down to six hundred and six hundred and uh, four hundred. Now, do you remember when we have our IR here? I think I've I've got it on the high case, so. Oh, shit. So let's put it on the base case. Okay. And let's see what happens to the... to the... Uh, IR when we change this. Oh, shoot. Okay. Why do I have a different uh, size here? This is irritating me. So maybe I'll uh, do this. Shift control right arrow. Control space bar. Make them all a little wider and let's have a... Keep it... Uh, a little consistent. So what we're going to do now is where we add the Ray Finance debt here, we're going to use, I think we can use a, a match function. So we'll just match if this is the same as this. I think it's a pretty simple match function. And then we match this against the whole uh, thing here. And put a comma zero. And I'm going to put an index and click on this one. And we don't worry about that. And then I'll put an if error. How's that? And if it's if okay okay so we have 800 coming in all these years and then 600 I guess I have 400 I don't know I should have added another kind of 400 here let's put uh, Thirty. Okay, and perhaps let's put twenty-five. Okay, and then we so we have all of these refinancings occur. Okay, that that worked just fine with match and index. And now we have to, uh, then we get the repayments from the sweep. But let's do the same thing. Now let's assume that uh, we, on that same period, 
So I think we should put refinancing period up here. Uh, if I can make that a true, whenever this is true, we will um, refinance. Uh, we'll refinance and then. Uh, 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 refinance and then. Uh, God damn, pay off our old financing. So I think it's going to be good to have a true and false here. So let's put a match. And look at this one. Okay. And. Okay. Now when we do this, don't worry. It's going to mess everything up for a minute. But whenever it's not an NA, we just call it a true. So how about we can even use if error. If error, then we, uh, you know, how about that's a little, we want it just true false. So if is number. Is number otherwise we put false. Okay, and I'm fucked up. Sorry about that. So now we have multiple uh, refinancings. It happened because we uh, have these things on our true and false. It seemed to have uh, put the thing in there, and that, that's not a bad thing. So now let's put less um, repayments. at refinancing. Oh God, is this boring. Okay, so we'll put a sum of the uh, opening balance and the, no, God damn it. We put the opening balance minus the amount we repaid. So we'll refinance right as soon as we finish uh, repaying, and then let's multiply this by the uh, true or false. Okay. We could, uh, so then we uh, we repay this, and we've refinanced this. And of course, we need to adjust our closing balance and subtract this out. Okay. So now we have a little more interesting cash flows and. Uh, in this case, we push our debt back. We keep pushing our debt back to 800 or 600 every couple of years. And the good news is we finally do get to pay it off. And then when we look at our, uh, hopefully our cash flow reflects the correct thing. So we have this amount, I guess in this one, I, I uh, we must have had no uh, debt outstanding. So perhaps we could have... Uh, issued a little more here and now uh, so in our dividends uh, oh no no there's an incorrect formula times this and we better subtract the refinance debt during the refinancing period okay and we'll copy this across so now we have multiple refinancings uh, this one, right, this last one gave us a 400 refinancing. And then our equity IRR went up to 18.02. So if we had, how about this? I'll copy this. 
uh, pasted special as values just in case. Okay, so in our first refinancing, if we had none, we're down to a 7.96% financing. If we had just one refinancing, we're up to 9.2, 2, we're up to 10, 3, uh, 12, 4, 14, and so on and so forth. Okay, and maybe we could have even done a refinancing here. Uh, maybe we'll copy one over, so maybe we should have done it in 22. And it didn't really make much of a difference, but maybe we could have done this as 600. And maybe we could have done this as 700. And we can see kind of what sort of... Uh, what sort of uh, refinancings we do and now we've kind of filled up this whole thing and with the multiple refinancings we have got the IRR back up so so far so good that and again this one is uh, we don't need this anymore because uh, I don't know who cares about the reef the conditional formatting right now and I'm gonna put this as a multiple I'm gonna call this multiple uh, refinancings okay and uh, uh, then we're there and that wasn't a very long video and now instead of just putting arbitrary uh, refinancings in let's do something a little more sophisticated and then what we like to do in the next video excuse me excuse me for that is we'd like to size the refinancings according to the according to the dscr prospective dscr okay so it's a short little video i expected it to be much